Hi, I'm Danny Gasparini, and welcome to this segment of Penn Voice. I'm joined today by Bart Charlo, who is the CEO of Samaritan House. Bart, I should say welcome back. Thank you. It's always great to be here. Yeah, it's, uh, I love um, having conversations with you about Samaritan House because there's always something in the hopper. You're always creating and, and, and being innovative with the programs and the people that you serve. And um, you've always got, you always provide some hope for us that uh, our community is coming together and doing some great things with Samaritan House. Today is no different, uh -huh. um, but give our viewers a little bit of background about what Samaritan, do Samaritan House does and, and what your mission is. Okay, well, Samaritan House, as you know, is dedicated to helping people who are living in poverty survive and then to thrive. So we're doing all of those things that they need for about 12,000 people a year, your neighbors and the folks you know who are working in your town. And what we're doing is giving them food, shelter, clothing, health care, financial empowerment, all kinds of services to help them put their lives back together so that they and their families can thrive and continue to live here. You know, not for today's conversation, but I know we could have one later on that as the gap sort of widens between wealth and those that need services, I'm sure that you're, you're busier than ever with individuals that never thought in a million years that they would probably need the services of Samaritan House. So thank you for being there for our folks that live and reside uh, here in San Mateo County. Well, I appreciate that, Danny, because I don't think folks realize how much poverty actually exists around Agreed. us. Agreed. We're seeing people who were middle class who are dropping down the ladder and discovering all of a sudden they can't afford to live here and yet this is where they never thought are. about navigating the system at, you know at that level true and it's it's always sort of that um, hidden um, population if you will right yeah. we do a great job at keeping um, everybody sort of silent and below ground so thank you again You're for welcome. what you do at Samaritan house and for lifting and uplifting these families um, into success so today we are going to talk about success and one of uh -huh. the great programs um, amongst the many that again Samaritan house does and, and how collaborative you are with other agencies So we're here to talk about the food pharmacy. Uh -huh. So give us a little background on it Well, you know you put food and pharmacy together <laughs> and you start scratching your head. What's going on here? But what we're talking about is actually these are the first two food pharmacies in the state of California So for this end of the continent, we're kind of pioneering this stuff, you know Food is good medicine. That is good food is good medicine. If you're eating the wrong food, of course, it's unhealthy for you and contributes to disease. And nowhere is that more evident than in a disease, for example, like diabetes. Correct. That is one of the most prevalent diagnoses in the United States. And our friends over at the food bank in doing their research into people who are living in poverty found that they are three times more likely to be subject to the disease of diabetes than the rest of us. So that's pretty profound. Right. So what we decided was um, there is a way to treat it with food. We didn't know how well it would work, and we are really shocked to discover it. It's incredible. But this idea, and, and I want to get this across to get credit properly done, our friend Kathy Jackson, who's CEO of the Second Harvest Food Bank, had learned about the idea back east and brought it out here to a conference she was putting on. And with help from Sequoia Healthcare District and our clinics, we were able to put together a partnership to launch it. Now we have it in both our clinics. So to tell you what it is, it's a medically supervised program for people with dietarily controlled diseases like diabetes, for example, mm -hmm. in which the doctor that you're seeing for your regular care diagnoses your condition, prescribes for you the kind of diet you really should be eating instead of what you are eating. Right. And then you talk to a nutritionist, you get food demonstrations, and you walk across the clinic, and you get enough food for your entire family of the right kind for the week. Interesting, so you're in the business of um, free clinics. Right. And Second Harvest Food Bank is in the business of providing food service. And when you were, or, or foods that people can go and access. Uh -huh. And when you were saying that about Second Harvest Food Bank, the first thing that came into my mind was, what do I donate first when I donate to a food bank? It would be grains, it would be high carbohydrates, something uh -huh. that can last um, for a fairly long time, breads which are the worst things thing you can do for, for diabetes, diabetes. <laughs> for diabetes care. And yet it's probably the product that most um, food banks have in greatest supply. Yes. So I, so now it's all coming together. So it's, it's a much greater and very specific program geared towards bringing your clinic and your diagnosis and your treatments right. with food, with the food. So think about it, it's more than just giving out the food, which right. is just a pantry operation. Right. We already do an immense amount of that, you know. We do over 900,000 meals a year. 
This is a situation in which you are getting a medically monitored treatment program, but a part of your prescription is something right. that you eat. It's just better food. So we kind of understand then how this food pharmacy is very different than a, a, a food pantry. Uh -huh. um, how, how long has it been in existence now? And then how will you sort of track some of that medical data and that um, health data? Well, we've had the first food pharmacy open for a little under a year and a half now, the second food pharmacy for a little over a half a year. So there's one in Redwood City at our mm -hmm. free clinic there, and there's one in San Mateo at our free clinic up there. What we do, because it is a medically monitored program, right. is we actually track factors such as A1C, which is the main you know, blood uh, glucose level mm -hmm. tracking that you do for diabetes, but also things like weight as well, because weight control is a part of diabetes control. And what we are finding is utterly astonishing because for people who are using our food pharmacy regularly, they are getting results in terms of lowering their A1C and even losing weight that's equivalent to what they get from taking medication. So it sounds so wonderful. And, and are there any challenges to this? Is there enough fresh foods, vegetables, meats, proteins, that you have ample supply in the food pharmacy to ensure that is then pairing with the individuals who's seeking the medical attention? Well, so far we do because our Second Harvest Food Bank has a concentration on healthy foods and they're able to supply it. But I want to be honest with you, it's costly food. It's the kind of things right. that they can't get in those donations you give. It's the kind of thing they actually have to go buy in bulk. Right, because of its freshness and that it has a shelf life, of course. Well, that's part of it in terms of the fresh fruit and vegetables, which are very important. But if you talk about the grains, for example, you mm -hmm. can eat grains, you can eat complex carbohydrates, but they need to think, be things like whole grain uh, cereals like quinoa, for example. Instead of eating white bread, you're gonna eat brown bread. Um, you'll eat tuna fish, you'll, eat, you'll have dairy products, you'll eat chicken, all of those things that are high in protein and low in that simple carbohydrate stuff that we're inundated with. So logistically, do you bring um, sort of the food pantry to your clinics, or do you then have the individual who is seeking assistance at the clinic go to the food pantry for a special pickup? Well, the design of this program is to remove every obstacle, every challenge, and every little excuse for not getting the right diet. Mm -hmm. So the, the pantry for the food pharmacy is in the clinic itself. It's got a separate area and folks walk in with their prescription, which says what kind of food they're supposed to get, and then they go shop. They pick what they would eat, what their family would eat for the week. And I have to tell you this about it. It's more than just food. This is designed to be a behavior change program. Mm -hmm. We're talking about altering lifelong eating behaviors. And in order to do that, you've got to get the whole family involved. You ever been at a, at a dinner where one person's dieting and everybody else is eating chocolate cake? All the time. Yeah, how well does that <laughs> one work, right? So if the whole family has enough of the same food, they're cooking it together, it's new, it's exciting, it tastes terrific, it's fresh, you know, everybody gets on the bandwagon. Right. So we help the patients stick with it, but we're also helping the rest of their family who probably has the same uh, predispositions to it, we're helping them prevent it as well. So how do we um, bring a concept like this to all of our clinics um, throughout the county, <laughs> not just the Samaritan House clinics. Because I agree with you, that removing the barrier of the individual seeking the mm -hmm. medical support and then actually having the food right then and there right. um, does, in fact, change their lifestyle because it's right there. So it's not, oh, well, tomorrow I'll Correct. go to the grocery store. Oh, well, the grocery store is across town. Or they didn't have fresh fruit and vegetables, or I can't afford it. Right. We're removing absolutely all of those obstacles. It's right there for you. You walk away with it. So what, um, we just have about 30 seconds left. Sure. What can um, our viewers support you with and help you with? Well, if you know people who would qualify for our free medical services, people living in poverty without insurance, refer them to us. If they have medical skills and want to volunteer in our clinic or translating skills, we work primarily on volunteers. And of course, you know, we live on donations at Samaritan House. It does cost something to run all of these many services for 12,000 people. So we'd love it if they go to our webpage and uh, see about volunteering and donating. Well, Bart, thank you so much for bringing this program to us here at Penn Voice and for also uh, bringing the program to our residents in San Mateo County. And and thank you to all of your partners in this um, in this program too. I look forward to hearing more about some of the data um, and all of the work that you're doing with 
the health of individuals of San Mateo County. So thank you. And we'll see all of you next time on Penn Voice.